Maestras y maestros, tengan todos ustedes muy buenos días. Es para nosotros un verdadero placer darles la más cordial de las bienvenidas a esta primera asesoría a docentes de inglés. Sean todos y cada uno de ustedes bienvenidos. Sabemos que en ocasiones nos acompañan algunas otras figuras educativas como inspectores, como supervisores, directores, auxiliares, todos y cada uno de ustedes bienvenidos. En esta ocasión también me da mucho gusto poder saludarlos a nombre de la maestra Daría Elizondo Garza, que es la directora de educación secundaria quien nos ha brindado todo tipo de facilidades para poder llevar a cabo esta primera asesoría con docentes de inglés. Para un servidor, profesor Ángel Zárate Rojas, encargado de esta coordinación académica, también me es muy grato saludarlos de manera muy afectuosa y con mucho respeto y mucho reconocimiento hacia todos y cada uno de ustedes. En esta primera asesoría, maestras y maestros, vamos con todo el propósito de brindarles a ustedes herramientas de carácter técnico pedagógico para que transiten de manera más profesional, con mayores herramientas, hacia el primer trimestre de este ciclo escolar. Ese es uno de los propósitos fundamentales de esta asesoría. Y para eso, aquí en esta coordinación académica, pues contamos con especialistas, con tres mujeres, con tres damas que yo creo que ustedes ya conocen las identifican porque son excelentes asesoras de inglés reconocidas no nada más a nivel estatal, sino a nivel nacional también. Por eso, para un servidor es muy, me siento con mucho orgullo de poder contar con este, con esta calidad de estas compañeras que están aquí en la Academia de Inglés. Permítanme presentarlas. La maestra Silvia Ernestina Chávez Palacios es una de las asesoras que hoy estará por aquí con ustedes. También la maestra Berta Alicia Guerrero Sáenz también estará aquí asesorando en esta mañana. Y también contamos con la presencia de la maestra Esther Noemí Medellín Guerrero, a quien en este momento cedo el uso de la palabra. Adelante, maestra Esther. Gracias, maestro. Muy amable. Ok, uh, good morning, everyone. It's nice to see all of you again. And hope this uh, meeting is fruitful for you and for your teaching practice. Let me share a uh, screen. So we can start with the presentation. Okay. Do you see the screen for the first meeting for English teachers? Yes. All right. Yes. Thank you. All right. Okay, let's start. So this meeting is for all of the English teachers in the state of Nuevo Leon. It's not only for the presidents of the zone, but for all English teachers, okay? I will ask you uh, before we start to turn off your microphones so we can, everyone can hear clearly, all right? This is the overview of what I am going to talk about today with you. I'm gonna to talk about very briefly about the syllabus, 
the first quarter for first grade, identifying social practices of the language and the achievements that are expected. I'm gonna give you a content planner, a planning format, some important facts about the program. I'm gonna talk to you about also many ideas in one. And for the last topic, I'm gonna cover project-based learning, all right? So first of all, let's see the syllables we're going to work with in this school year. It's our only a reminder. I know you already know, but it's only a reminder, okay? For first and second grade, we're gonna work with aprendizajes claves para la educación integral, okay? English as a foreign language. And for third grade, we're gonna work with the Programa Nacional de Inglés, 2011 program, as we all know it. And for first and second grade, the 2017 program, okay? Just to make sure everything is in order, okay? For the first quarter, okay, of first grade, we're gonna see, we're suggesting that you see only three social practices of the language, okay? Which are exchanges opinion about a community service, reading classic tales, and the bilingual dictionary, okay? So uh, these are the, are the achievements, expected learning achievements we have here, three for community services, five for reading classic tales, and four for how to use a bilingual dictionary, okay? There are many ideas we can share about how you can work with them. Okay, for, uh, let me give you one. For the community services, we can go to the English is Fun for Students that we already shared with you some years ago. Okay, last year, I think it was last year. Wasn't it, Berta? Yes. Last year? Okay, yes. thank you. So here we have the English is Fun. This is for first grade. And you can start uh, like, um, after you see the presentation and you do all the material, or first beforehand, you can put them a uh, word search so they can start looking for uh, words that you will use during the social practice of the language, like food, park, seniors, volunteers, collecting, garden, program, shelter. This could be one idea you can use, all right? Let me close them. And it's all there in English is fun for students. Then let's go on to, wait a minute, first. Let's go on to read classic tales. I didn't put a link here, but I put uh, some pictures. What can you do? Well, first it says revises, revises classic tales. Why not work with um, a thing we had uh, here in the GTDs? Guiones Didácticos Tutoriales. It's one of the pages we have here. This is the, a picture of one of the activities we have in this book. Uh, have you ever heard or listened or seen a movie about classic tales? Here are some examples. Complete the name of the classic tales. This is like a warm up activity so we can start beginning with the social practice of the language, all right? Then we have here, let me put here this, write instructions on how to use a bilingual dictionary. Okay, we have three, uh, four achievements to get to, our students to get to. And why don't we use, this is another idea, a suggestion. Why don't we use the link we have already about Powtoons? And it's gonna be on the presentation as well. Let me check, okay, here we have it.
Okay, uh, it's just a glimpse, okay? So you can uh, have an idea of what is that on that video of how tunes. Okay, you can use that how tunes after you cover all the material for writing instructions on how to use a bilingual dictionary. So you can use it as a review or you can do it, you can give the link to your students so they can see it at their home, at their houses, bit by bit, putting a stop where they don't understand, play it again, okay? And that, I think that will help a lot of our students to give them clarity of what are the entry words, what are the, uh, the types of bilingual dictionaries that we have, that there are two sections, the abbreviations they have, et cetera. Now let's go to the other slide. Okay, we already covered that one. And these are for the new teachers that are, uh, that are starting to work here with us, okay? Here in the, the program, the program, the 2017 program, oops, it's upside down, the 2017 program. There we go. We have on one of the pages, uh, secondary, and these are the social environments. We have three social environments, familiar and community, ludic and literary, and academic and educational. Then we have here, like I'm pointing out, let me use the marker. Here we have the social practice of the language. And in here we have inter exchanges opinions about a community service, composes dialogues and interventions for a dubbing of a silent movie. And here are, we have here the aprendizajes esperados or the achievements like we say in English. And here we have the three and so on, okay? Um, it's done, let's continue. This is the other part of that page, okay? So these are the environments I was speaking about. And we have only 10 social practices of the language for each grade, for second, for third, and for first grade. Oh, now we're gonna have giveaways. It's time for a giveaway. I have here a planner, a school planner, and it's content at a glance. So I have August, September, October, all through the year of July, okay? And I'm gonna share with you. You're gonna, you can write, like I wrote here, back to school. This wasn't on the school planner, but I wrote it with the use of the computer, the things that the computer has to offer us. And we can use this also as like um, the content distribution. We can put there in the, in the planner. And let me share, wait a minute. I think I have to unshare so I can share with, okay, it's up, it's up. Let me see, here we have in the chat box, okay. It's on my, it's gonna appear in your chat box, box. okay. English is fun, diagramas, classroom culture, no. Where am I? Great. Yes, contents at a glance, okay? So you can write your contents, what you are seeing very, very briefly, and that would be like a dosificación. And there it goes, okay? Did you got it in your chat box? So you can download it in your computer. Um, yes or no? Guys, look at your chat box and the file is over there, it's there. Did you get it? I don't have it. Did you look at your chat box? Yes. Dice de mí para coordinación académica de secundarias. 
a lo mejor es a todos para el anfitrión nada más. Tiene que colocarle que sea para todos. Sí. Y lo voy a hacer. Todos en la reunión. Ok. Mm -hmm. Let me do it again. There we go. Did you get it? Not yet. No, <laughs> not yet. Not yet, teacher. It's only for for three. Esther, confitrón, coordinación académica, and Lorena Mendoza. <laughs> Now, did you get it? <laughs> this is the third one. This has to be the charm. Three is the charm, you know? Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. they are there already. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's for you, all right? Now, let me turn off the chat box and let's see the other thing. Okay, here we have the planning format, okay? And the planning format has, this is a suggested planning format. You can do one on your own, okay? Uh, here we have the school's name, teacher's name, subject, grade group term, uh, social practice of the language, achievement product, the beginning, the development, and the closing. What types of interaction are there? Individual, pair work, teamwork, and group work. Materials, resources, and assessments. And um, differentiating instruction strategies. For the kids that we have to adapt certain things, we can write there. The good thing about this is that yesterday afternoon, I, I'm gonna share this format with you and it has already all the achievements we're gonna see in the year, all the social practices, and you're just going to copy and paste it in the right thing. You don't have to type it. It's already in the file. In the comment section, you just copy and put it on the right, on the rectangle it belongs to. And we're also gonna see an administrating content. And let me share with you that also in the chat. And this is for everyone. Todos en la reunión. And here we have dosificaciones, no, formats, formats and more. Okay, primer grado, okay, and formato de inglés. It's already there and it has the comment thing. Let me see if I can put it right here. What else do we have to share? See, this is the giveaway section. We have also to share with you this administrating content. All right, did you get it, guys? Yes. All right, good. All right. Um, I want to downsize, but let me... Tengo que dejar de compartir. Because I need to see where am I. There we go. Wait a minute. Just bear with me a minute, please. Bear with me a minute because I'm going to see the formats. No, not this. So here's, um, let me share, let me share screen. Do you see this? This is the content distribution. 
that I put. So you can put it in the week. So either you can use the calendar I gave you first, or you can use this. This is by month, okay? Probably when you are, because you're teachers and there are three, three products to see, you can use one month for each product or three weeks for one product, another three weeks for another product and another three weeks. It depends in the level of English your students have and the difficulty of the content you are seeing, okay? So this is another idea where you can put the content, you can administrate content, all right? This is one. Now, um, for the, another one, ah, formato de inglés that I gave you, here you have here my comments. See, environment, you click it and you see my comments. So you just copy familiar and community and you paste it there. Did you see it? Yes. And it has also all the achievements in English. I did that yesterday night. So I hope they're okay. All right. All the achievements, the social practices of the language and the environments. I hope, I hope this is helpful for you, for your teaching practice, okay? Okay, now let's go to our presentation. Continuing with our presentation. Todavía sigo en tiempo. Okay, some important facts. Let me put it right there. Some important facts that we have to consider in this uh, program, 2017 program. First of all, it's an approach for competence approach. It's building knowledge, using scaffolding, helping each other, student and student, in reality, teacher aiding the students so they can build, they can scaffold their knowledge and develop skills, attitudes, and values. English in this 2017 program belongs to the academic field, which is name, language, and communication. What are the teacher's role? The teacher's role in here are with his or her abilities, his experience or her, expe her experience, create the learning environments, environments so our students can achieve the expected learning. How many social practices of the language they will have? They will have 10 per grade. And there will be 30 different social practices of the languages throughout the secondary level, okay? Now, many ideas in one. In this, I would like you, for you, we're gonna work with chat box right here, okay? I'm gonna tell you when exactly we're gonna work with the chat box. Okay, many ideas in one. First, I'm gonna share more tips for you to work with, okay? But in the following tips, I want you to analyze, to think about the basic structure of the activity. Then you're gonna take away the content and then you're gonna tell me what other content would this structure work with? Forget, I can use it. Instead say, okay, the teacher gave me this idea Okay, if I take away the content and I see only the structure, how can I use this in my teaching practice? That's where I want to go with you right now. Okay. So mind mapping. I have here the book. That's my, my work, my central work book. It's a part of speech. Is it a noun or is it a verb? What's the meaning of book? Well, the meaning of book can be libro, or it could be hacer una reservación, reservar. What is the antonym for book? Another way to see book, uh, to say book, an antonym, a synonym, 
What is the spelling? In American English and British English, is it the same? The word book, they, do they use it the same? Like a part, department and flat, like center and center? Okay, give me an example. And the students can write, my favorite book is The Diary of Anne Frank or any other book, Harry Potter, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now let's go to our chat box. Are there any other ways you can use besides putting the parts of speech like in a dictionary? I can use this mind map in the bilingual dictionary. Where else can you use mind maps? Uh, you can write them on the chat box. My maps can be used since no one is answering. All right. Uh, my maps can be used like in third grade in the anthology of a story event, history event. History yes, event. they can use mind maps. We can use mind maps on how a machine works. Okay, there are many things we can use mind maps. Okay, let's go on to another tip. And this tip is napkin. So we use two set of cards, two pairs of cards. Okay, you turn them up. And if they match, you yell snap. And if they you yell snap, you get one point in that team. You can use this in groups of, by pairs, in groups of three with your students or in groups of four. And not too large groups, okay? And let me share with you a snap game. I did some cards I made about related to the classic tales. Let me share it with you right now. Do you have any other ideas for this snap game? Let me see its name, English images, no. I don't have it right here with me. I don't know why it didn't have, I don't have it. I don't have it. I'm gonna send it to you via face, Facebook, okay guys? Because I don't have it with you right now, okay? Someone is answering here? Okay, I will send it again. Ana Teresa Nunez Ramos, I will send it again, the information. Uh, probably it's because you're on a cell phone, Bianca. Mm. Okay, so let's see. Uh, why is this getting here? All right, another thing we can do it's window painting, okay? Let's listen. This activity is called window painting. And the reason I am uh, sharing with you this activity, it's because people remember only five, seven or nine new words at a time. 
they don't remember a list of 50 verbs that you give them or 100 verbs that you give them. They remember less. So five, seven, or nine words, new words for our students is good enough so they can start learning new vocabulary according to the social practice of the language. Here we have the following vocabulary. Dial 911, rescue, please hurry, emergency, fire, firefighters, volunteer, call, and animal shelter. Can you guess to which social practice, social practice am I relating these words? Yes, it's about community services. Okay, now, what do we do? Well, we can do several things. First, our students can make a grid in their notebooks and put nine cards with the new vocabulary, or they can put the cards in their desk with their teammates, or you can put them on the board, okay? Now, what do you do? The teacher repeats them aloud horizontally and then vertically. After you repeated all of them aloud and your students can repeat after you, okay? You can flip one down like this. Let's flip dial 911. Let's put your masking tape right there. And we start all over again. Sorry about that. You put that over there. So you then you start again repeating. Dial 911. Rescue, please hurry, emergency, fire, firefighters. You can use as well some pictures, like for fire, put a small picture there so the students can recall what is fire, okay? After you finish horizontally and vertically, you can start again. The second time, you flip down another word and you start repeating. Dial 911, rescue, please hurry, emergency, fire, fighter fighters, and so on. You can do with the rest of the cards. So that's another idea I have there for you, okay? Um, start thinking in. That's the structure. Take out the content. What other content can you put with that structure? Okay, let's go on with another slide, the other slide. Using the wall opinion gap. Okay, so in this case, you put two letter size papers with sentences like English weather is lovely. And on the other side of the room, you put English weather is horrible. Students have to mingle. They have to stand up from their seats. They have to move and read one and then read the other one. And then they have to put themselves according to where they stand. Do they agree with English weather is lovely or do they don't agree and they are going to put themselves in the corner where English weather is horrible. So you can do this in the classroom and if they, they're not in favor and they're not against those sentences. They can put themselves in the middle of the classroom. All right. Now, what can we do with this? Well, we can do with this like likes or dislikes. All right. Like separating in three large groups. So when we then can start working with them in the three large groups. Okay and many other stuff. I hope uh, someone can write on the chat box any other ideas they have, because if we share ideas as colleagues, we can grow up as professionals in our teaching practice. Sometimes we see uh, an activity that is going only this way, but there are other ways we can use that activity as well. 
And if my colleague tells me how to do it, well, the better for me, the more the merrier. You know what they say, the more the merrier. All right, now let's go on to another slide. This is another idea. So you toss some papers on the floor, color papers, any color, white, blue, yellow, pink, any color. The students pick them up or they pick one combination that represents what they like and they talk to their peer. See, like this, they picked up like this one and this one, suppose. Oh, well, I picked green because I like broccoli and I like carrots, okay? They start talking to their peers, okay? Another thing is you put all the papers again on the floor, they pick again a color or a combination and they talk to their peer about a place they like. For example, ah, I chose yellow and I start. I went to a store, a city in Yucatan where all the houses are yellow, okay? And I like that city a lot, okay? That's one idea. Another idea is to do the same. You put the papers on the floor, they pick again one paper or two papers and they talk about the person they like. Well, I like my mom, okay? She's very dear to me. She's my friend. Oh, I like my friend, Lucia. Uh, she's very supportive when I am crying, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can tell, you can use the same activity to tell the other person what another peer told you. Oh, Miss Medellin told me that she likes her mother a lot because she's very supportive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or she told me she likes carrots and broccoli, okay? And they are using the third singular, all right? The next will be buttons, okay? Here we are buttons. We have a variety, you ask your students to bring any kind of button, you put them on the floor or on a table and they choose a button, okay? Suppose this is a button. I choose it and this is blue. I look at it very carefully. Is it female or, fe or male? Mm, it's female, okay? Give it a name. Its name will be blue, blue, okay? What does he do? Blue is part, is an actor. Blue is an actor, okay? What pet does he or she have? Oh, he has a dash hound a dog, a dash gown, okay? Try to find a friend button. So I go with my button, blue, and I go and mingle with other buttons, the other students, okay? And I talk to them and I start talking to them. Hi, I'm blue, okay? I have a dog, who's, it's a dash gown, okay? Um, I'm an actor, who are you? And they start like talking, okay? You give them that freedom. Afterwards, they can start creating their own story, okay? Their classic tale story. Isn't this a good idea to start a, a classic tale? What do you think? Now, let's talk about our last topic for me, which is project-based learning. Well, project-based learning is very student-centered. It's um, an, active, an active method, active learning method, project-based learning. It's not the only uh, active learning method. It's not only because there are cases method. That's another method for active learning. But in this case, it's student-centered. Students research, create, learn, and apply. They develop their knowledge and their skills through engaging challenges. But the thing is that they have to be centered in real situation tasks and it fosters also group work, okay? One thing I can advise you and give you is that don't let your students 
work alone by themselves. This is the project there. This is the project we're gonna have. You work with it. You have to guide them. You have to monitor them. You don't leave them on their own because they're not gonna finish their project on time and when, uh, when the deadline, deadlines are, okay? You have to be with them. Ask them each day they are in the project, ask them each day to fulfill um, hoja de trabajo that they have to finish about what they did during the activity, during the hour. What are the steps of social uh, project-based learning? You may confuse the PBL with problem-based learning. This is project-based learning. Identify the project and plan. That's the first one. Ask some questions. What do you think? What are our resources? How are we going to work in groups of three, in groups of four? That's the first step of project-based learning. Then you have to implement, okay? That's where you work a lot, okay? They work, but you work as well. Then they present their poster about environmental emergencies. They present um, uh, the dialogue about community services, okay? That's the final, the project ending. And then the outcomes. In the outcomes is assessment. Try to use more peer assessment and self-assessment. Not only teacher assesses the group, but they, so they can reflect on what they are doing. They can reflect on, well, I have this opportunity for the next project, okay? Not only uh, what I made, I made it kind of so-so. For the next time, I can have another opportunity to make a better project, okay? So that's why we need our students to reflect, to reflect on their work, to reflect on their learning, and how do we do this with self-assessment? And I think that's all for me right now. Uh, let me see, where am I? Ah, tag feedback, there we have it. Tell something you like about the project, ask a thoughtful question and give a positive suggestion. This will be done like uh, in peer assessment, tag feedback. Many thanks by me. And it's time for Ms. Silvia Chavez to continue with our work. Before I leave, I want you to, I want to tell you that this presentation will be on YouTube. You go to YouTube, you type Redais Nuevo Leon, and there you have this uh, presentation recorded for you. For the other teachers that couldn't see right now, today, this presentation, they could have it tomorrow, by tomorrow, not today because uh, we have to work with uh, presentations of other subjects as well during the day, but by tomorrow you will have it in YouTube with Ice Nuevo Leon. Hope to see you again and hope my ideas like I understand, I don't understand teacher, okay? Instead of doing it with an apple, you can do it with a, a post-it and you laminate the post-it. So I understand, I don't understand. That's a quick view of what our students are getting to. Bye. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Thank you, teacher. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm glad to see you again. I will talk about second grade secondary school in this first academic meeting. I recommend that when you start your English class, always try to motivate it to your students what kind of, of 
pleasure activities they practice in your homes, in your time free, in your free time about uh, lottery, table games, or bingo, uh, or what uh, activities they want, they want like a football or swimming or what, what, what activities they want and they share with your students like bingo, snake and leaders and what leaders activities. In this time, the curriculum dosage proposal by time assignment English second, second grade. The, in this school, in this school circle 2022-2023. That's in Spanish. This is uh, the, the dosage curriculum for this first period. For the second period. And for the third period. Let's start for the spectrum learning in the first period, okay? What are the spectral learner in this period? We are environment, familiar and community, social practice of the language, express support and solidarity in the face of a, in the face of a daily problem. Achievement, express reason, of interest in a problem. Product, announcement, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Public PCA, this is the, pro the, the final product. Okay, who, here, here we go. Okay, a public service announcement PCA is a message in the public interest disseminate without charge with the objective of raising awards of and changing public attitudes and behavior toward a social issue. You can ask to your students, they can do a list of everyday problems like a personal, what, what kind of problem your students have? Personal, economic, economic, bad nutrition, or bad education, they don't have a habit to study. Could be familiar, conflicts, divorce, fight, etc. In the school, what, what, what problem your students have in your school? like a bully, violence, no values, etc. About the environment, we have a problem with the water, with the pollution, with the cl climate, with the words, or with poor people around the world, com uh, religions, conflict, and others they your students choose. Okay. What activities uh, we have, we can do to eradicate the bullying? Well, I recommended uh, sports, exercise, exercises, good nutrition, uh, talk topics, uh, talk about topics about love, peace, right conduct, true values, etc. Another topic in this period is about the same. Uh, this is this is this slice uh, is an idea about how how can you evaluate uh, evaluation instrument in this school circle 2022-2023. This is an idea. You can you can uh, choose another one. Second grade dealing with everyday problems, environment, family, and community, 
social practice of the language, express support and solidarity when face every problems. Communicate activity, a changes associated with, with a specific purpose. Achievements, define ways of expressing oneself according to speaker. What's the final product? Public service announcements, PCA, make a list of agreements from you. Okay, this is an idea. This is a, this slide represents an idea that you can, you can, uh, your students can uh, write in a specific uh, problem. They make a list or what's a problem? What are the actions to solve, to solve the problem? A fact and who can do it? The school, in home, in school, in the society, et cetera. Uh, the student, you, your students can choose a specific problem was the pro, was a prop propose of concert or concentrate action to solve the problem, a fact to support the import importance of the messages, decide the kind of people that can do the purpose action. Another topic for this period is like a read short literary text, and you can choose another. Uh, achievement, your students select short plays, understand main ideas, dramatize, dramatize it reading. The product final is dramatized reading. Um, this slide represents some ideas of the book you can recommend it to your students. Some classic like a Tom Sawyer, Little Woman, Little Man, Frankenstein, Dracula, etc. We know in this time our students want other kind of, of book. So you you can that's okay. You, the students can select other other tests they want it. This is an example. Uh, this slide represents the idea when your students uh, read, uh, uh, they are reading, dramatize, dramatizing reading. First of all, requirements. Select the reading text. The teacher is an expert in teaching this, in teaching this technique. Please, first of all, you are the teacher, you are the teacher. So you have, uh, you have first presents a dramatized reading in English first. Plays with voice modulation, body language accompany all expressions during reading tests, like emotion, intonation, rhythm, are very important. The readers plays or characters. The reader plays a character. The reader must maintain eye contact with the audience. Read safety. Okay, another topic in this period, in this first period, is about select and review well, so instruction. Read, understand, read, understand. Write instruction and edit instruction. This topic is academic and training. What's the social practice of the language? Does produce instruction in a rich situation? Could be of a natural phenomenon and you can choose another one. It doesn't matter. Achievement, Re I repeat, select and review instruction. Read, understand, write instruction, edit instruction. The final, the product, the final product is you. I recommended this poster with instruction. This is an idea 
about what you can do a uh, um, natural warning uh, about you can have a topics like uh, like uh, uh, topics about phenomenal natural phenomenal like hurricanes, fires, earthquakes, tornadoes, uh, frogs, snowfalls, wars, crockets, a tsunami, avalanche, etc. Uh, your students have a final problem. The students make posters with instructions. This is some idea about natural disaster, uh, but you can choose another one. Like uh, I repeat it, avalanche, meteorites, tsunami, crockett, wild fry, tornadoes, flood, etc. In this slide, uh, some, I suggest some exercise about tutorial didactic scripts. There, there are uh, exercise dynamic evaluation related to the topic we are, we are studying. This is in the Guiones Didacticos Tutoriales. You can find this material. In this slide is the continue. You have uh, Guiones Didacticos Tutoriales, second grade English. The strategies for the teaching. What are the strategies the teachers I recommended? I recommended uh, use uh, the didactic material, use of the dictionary, a specter learning goal, a conceptual map, pricing the student's stimulation, teaching the four English competence, like a listening, speaking, writing, and reading. Um, Measure learning with simple, simple evaluation. Remember, simple evaluation. A strategy of teaching by having the student learning to learn, like autodidactic, self-taught way. Um, I recommend it and I say to you students, you can be your own teacher. You don't have to, to waste money or you don't have to pay a lot of money with the special programs or in special academy. You can be your own teacher by yourself, playing, playing uh, video games, watching a television, videos, movies, uh, uh, go to the cinema in, with English pictures, uh, comics, video games, etc. You are the teacher, and I recommend it that you can give to your students extra points. They love extra points. Like in the, your notebook, at the end of your notebook, you can say, okay, today is September 12th, and Juanito uh, watching a television in English programs one hour. And can serve uh, your, your mother or your father uh, the next day or the no, another the week uh, in the notebook, Juanito uh, play video games in English and they can, your students can learn by, by, his, by themselves your English. They can, they can be your own teacher. Each teach in his classroom use this strategies according with the contest. What techniques I recommended with to teach your English class? Dialogue, dramatization, read test, read exercise dictation, teach resources like song, game, I repeat it, use, use alludic materials, Music, radio, TV, films, programs, video games, etc. Academic resource. We have a lot of a lot of academic resource. We have a lot of platforms. You can choose 
or you can recommend it to your students. Skate, Dr. YouTube, I say Dr. YouTube, there are all the topics you teach to your students. So I recommend it um, when you try to find some topic, you say to your students, um, Google Academic, because there are the investigation, there are two. Okay, Google Meet, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and different platforms in English. English is very fun. There are a lot of materials in the internet that your students can, can learn by themselves. Oh, this teacher, is it a wish? Okay. All the materials will be in Redice, in Redice. This material, is, it will be in the right. Okay, dear teacher and staff, we are very grateful for your time and attention. We hope that this material be a for you in, in teaching of your English language. Thanks, thanks again and take care everyone. Have a nice day and much success in your English class. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Uh, Roberta Guerrero Science, it will continue with the topic of this first semester, third grade. Thanks a lot. Good morning, dear teachers. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you at the beginning of this uh, new school year. I'm going to uh, talk a little bit uh, about the third grade syllabus. And uh, it is important to remember that in third grade, we continue working with the 2011 English syllabus. This is our first academic meeting <clears throat> for this uh, school year 2022-2023. In the first moment of evaluation, we have three social practices of the language. Uh, the first social practice is understand and express information related to goods and services. Here, the environment that we're going to work with is familiar and community. And the achievement is uh, the one that we're going to work with or establishes establishes the material reason for a complaint. Also infers the general meaning from explicit information, distinguishes between main ideas and some details. Also, we're going to work with uses of strategies to influence and meaning. And uh, as a product, we're going to work with the telephonic complain boys. The second social practice that we're going to work in this first moment is read and understand different types of literary texts from English speaking countries. The environment that we're going to work with is literary and ludic and the achievements uh, for this second social practice are uses various strategies to understand narratives, infers the general meaning and main ideas from details. The third one is formulate 
and answers questions in order to infer information. Another one is uh, writes opinions regarding moods. And the last one organizes paragraphs in order to create texts. Uh, the social practice uh, of this, uh, the product of this social practice is emotionary. Uh, also called inventory of emotions. And uh, the last social practice of the language is understand and write instructions. The environment that we're going to work with is academic and educational. And the achievements that we're going to work with our students are, for example, understand and interpret order and sequence of instruction elements to perform an experiment. Write and classify simple and complex sentences in order to create instruction sequences. And the last one is removes, adds, changes, and or rearranges information to edit a set of instructions. And the product of this social practice is set of instruction album. Here, we can see the first social practice of the language as it appears in our syllabus. It is important to remember that uh, in the contents, we have three types of components of different nature, which define the curricular contents. Uh, we're talking about doing with the language, knowing about the language, and being through the language. In the first one, doing with the language, this content, this content corresponds to the communicative act actions carried out in concrete interactive situations. Uh, in knowing about the language, this type of content involves a series of aspects, concepts, and topic for reflection on features, characteristics, and elements of the language. And in the third one, uh, component being through the language. This content refers to aspects related to the role of intercultural education in general and to language diversity in particular. Uh, during the English class, the students have to use some language structure. And here we have some examples related with telephonic complaint voicemail. Here we can see, I don't like the service you offer that are some activities or expressions that the students can work with. I'm not happy with the quality of your product. You must give me another room. The food was terrible. Our hotel room was dirty, or the waiter brought our food one hour late and it was cold. Those are some examples that the students can work with in this uh, product telephonic complaints, voicemail. And in this social practice, we're going to practice. Uh, some grammar activities using, for example, model verbs, adverbs, adjectives, uh, verb tenses, using the present, the past, and future, and the connectors. We can say, for example, for model ver verbs that they express things like ability, permission, possibility, obligation, etc. Uh, we're talking about, for example, for example, can, could, may, might, must, shall, will, should, ought to, etc. 
in uh, working with the adverbs, we can say that an adverb is a word that modifies or describes a verb. Adverbs often end in ly. And the adjectives, uh, remember that an adjective is a word that modifies a noun or a pronoun. And the purpose of an adjective is to describe a noun or a pronoun. In a, well, we have to uh, talk a, li a little bit about verb tenses. Uh, here we're going to use uh, the present, past, and future tenses. And uh, the, the students are used to use them since first grade. First grade, second and third grade, they're going to continue working using them. And uh, about the connectors, well, connectors are little words or phrases that help the students connect sentences and even paragraphs. We're going to use them for uh, the telephonic complaint voice mail product. And uh, they can use, for example, the word because, for instance, actually, and uh, also, then, finally, etc. Okay, we're going to continue, for example, talking about activities for the students. And we have some examples. You can use the brainstorm for possible complaints. Uh, the students also can identify and give details about a complaint, or they can write a dialogue about complaints. They can practice giving some complaints like the ones we said before. And finally, they can act out a role play about of course, uh, complain. Here, uh, it is uh, very important uh, to evaluate the student's performance. Uh, for this reason, uh, here we have an example of a rubric to evaluate a role play. Uh, here, uh, you can evaluate how the speech was, uh, if the students really communicate the character's feelings. Uh, you can check if they use uh, the vocabulary, grammar, and sentence pattern patterns correctly. Uh, you can see if they memorize the dialogue and have fluency or you can verify if they organize and prepare the role play correctly. And finally, you can see if the role play captured the audience interest. It is important for you to know if the students did a good work. Here, we have the second social practice of the language for this first term. Remember that we're going to use all this information to prepare our lesson plans. Here, we're going to work with the uh, emotionary inventory of emotions and the students are going to use expressions uh, like uh, my favorite, uh, let me see, where is it? I'm sorry, I got lost. We're talking about, this is the, yeah. Let me see, where am I? Inventory of emotions. Well, uh, we need to work with the elements in narrative, 
the different type of sentences, uh, the adjectives, comparative and superlative, pronouns, uh, talking about reflexive, reflexive and relative, the conditionals, the homophones, for example, two and two, and upper and lower case letters. The elements in narratives, uh, we're talking about, for example, of setting, the characters, the, uh, the plot, the conflict, or the theme. And uh, talking about types of sentences, we can use, for example, the declarative, the exclamatory, the imperative, and the interrogative sentences. Uh, also, the students are going to work the comparative and the superlatives. Let them investigate the rules to use them correctly. Uh, the reflexive and uh, relative pronouns, well, we can say that uh, reflexive pronouns is a pronoun that refers back to the subject. And the relative pronouns are used to form complex sentences. And the conditionals, uh, sometimes we call them if clauses. Uh, they describe the result of something might happen. Uh, the homophones, homophones are two or more words that sound the same. Uh, but have different meaning. These words are often spelled differently in English. And talking about upper and lower uh, case letters, uh, upper case letters, uh, also called capital letters, are used uh, at the beginning of a sentence or for the first letter of a proper noun. The, all this information can help me to work with our students and uh, let them give them some information. Uh, here we have, for example, uh, the emotionary inventory of emotions. We have a uh, Editing a checklist uh, uh, when we organize paragraphs in order uh, to create texts. For example, uh, you can uh, also use the self assessment. Here we're talking about correct uh, use of capital letters. Uh, also about the correct use of question mark, the exclamation point, etc. If uh, the work is spelled correctly, if the paragraphs are in the correct order, if the main idea is clear, and uh, here the teacher can add or remove, remove more aspects to be evaluated. It is important at the end of the social practice or the product to evaluate the students to know if they really got the knowledge. And uh, finally, we have the third social practice of the language. Uh, this is about understand and write instructions. In this social practice of the language, the product is a set of instructions album. And uh, the language structure that the teacher can work with the students can be, for example, uh, uh, if the teacher is going to work uh, with an experiment, the language structure that the students need to know can be the following. Uh, what is the experiment about? What are the materials needed? What are the expected results? What do the instructions say? 
what is the order of the instructions? Can you explain? Did it work well? Uh, how can it be illustrated? How many steps are required? And uh, for example, uh, in grammar, uh, you need to work with, uh, for this social practice language, uh, the graphic components and uh, some patterns uh, of uh, textual uh, arrangement. Uh, you're going to use uh, the adverbs again. In the first social practice of the language, we said that the adverbs, that an adverb is a word that modifies or describes a verb. And the adverbs often end in ly. We're going to work with the imperatives, the gerund, and the infinitive. Remember that the imperatives are used to give commands or orders. Uh, we're going to use the, the gerunds and uh, is the ing form of the verb that functions the same as a noun. The infinite, an infinitive is the base form of the verb that can function as a noun, adjective, or adverb. Uh, we're going to use again the simple present uh, tense. Uh, we're going to work with the prepositional phrases. And we have to remember that a prepositional phrase is a group of words that begin with a preposition and ends with a noun, pronoun, or a noun phrase. And uh, the punctuation uh, that we're going to use, we can uh, talk about the use of symbols such as full stop, or period, the comma, or the question marks to divide pattern words into sentences and clauses. And talking about, talking about the homographs, uh, the homographs are words with the same spelling, but having more than one meaning. Uh, in this slide, uh, we have some activities that the teacher can uh, work with the students. For example, uh, give the, the students some uh, sheets with instructions for different science experiments. Uh, also, let the students focus on the distribution of components or make sure the students understood what they are going to do. Let the students, I'm sorry, let the students know the importance of following instructions. Uh, also motivate the students to write and edit their instruction album. Remember that it is very important to guide the students to work in teams. So here we have a rubric to evaluate their participation. But uh, you as a teacher can elaborate the rubric you need for your students. Uh, this is only an example. For example, this is a team assessment, a rubric for a team assessment, uh, where it says, please uh, grade your participation uh, with your team. If you feel that you did a great job, smile, choose a smile face. If you feel that you could have done better, circle the sad face. For example, if I listen to my team members, 
I select the one the way I work. Uh, if I help my team members, even here we, we choose, we can auto evaluate. We're going to auto evaluate. I did my fair share on the work or I did my personal best or we made decisions together. And uh, finally, in this slide, we have the planning format that you can use to do your lesson plan. I hope it can help you to plan your classes, your daily classes. Remember that it's very important to plan our classes, to do a better job, to do a better teaching. Finally, uh, my colleagues and I want to thank you all for being connected with us in this first meeting. Please, uh, please evaluate, evaluate our participation uh, using the QR code. That's it. And uh, it says, en registro llenar correo para enviar algún comunicado posteriormente. Okay, so thank you very much and have a great day. Nice to talk to you again.